the El Socorro Center for Wildlife Conservation started a little more than nine years ago, based in El Socorro, on what was just 5,000 square feet of concrete and property. And we've moved to Freeport, but we have held on to the name because Socorro means help, and that's what we try to do. So we literally try to help the animals and try to help with wildlife conservation in Trinidad and Tobago. Our purpose is to promote wildlife conservation through education, rehabilitation and propagation. Ricardo and I have both been trained by the International Wildlife Rehabilitation Council uh, to different levels and we are also right now the only existing centre in the Caribbean that is registered as a member of that governing body, the only governing body for wildlife rehab in the world. Animals come in with all sorts of injuries, besides the often broken wings, broken legs, gunshot wounds, struck by cars, a whole lot of injuries are meted out upon our animals and they come here and we try our very best using what we've learned abroad to get them fixed up and get them back out into the wild. For the animals to be released, they have to meet certain criteria, what we call release criteria, which are set by the international organizations which govern rehabilitation. First of all, they must be able to identify their own species. A lot of times when animals are rehabbed, uh, especially orphan animals, they think of themselves as people and they stick around people and want to be like a person. So they must be able to identify their own species to be able to go out there and procreate. And secondly, they must be able to recognize and fear their natural predators, which would be man, domesticated animals, even cars and so on. They should know how to avoid. And finally, the animal must know how to fend for itself and find its own food and shelter out there in the wild. So we have to become the parents and prepare this animal to survive out there in the wild, else we'll just be dooming the animal to a slow but certain death. Unfortunately though, there are some animals that will never meet release criteria. What we try to do with these individuals, first, if it's an appropriate species and the animal is an appropriate character, they become our animal ambassadors, helping us to educate the public about our wildlife. We try to choose animals that are more misunderstood in the public we try to go out with snakes, very commonly misunderstood in Trinidad. The resources to operate a centre like this are they're, they're tremendous, there's, there's quite a lot. We do flyers, printing banners, then there's medical supplies, bandages, gauzes, medications. Then there's the food. The ocelots, four ocelots that we have, eat about 550 pounds of chicken every month. Rats and mice, the snakes and raptors we have, they eat about 150 to 200 a week, depending on our load of patients at the time. Fruits, hundreds of pounds of papaw, cherries, cane, bananas, all this to provide a variety of animals that we have here with a proper diet and to enable them to find these similar foods when they get into the wild. We do have a handful of reliable volunteers. In addition to that, we get small donations from folks who come to visit. The other two main sources of funding for the center are our jobs, our salaries, Ricardo's and mine. And we work our, what we, I will loosely call our day jobs. And we also have income generating events. The hard work, the long days, the sometimes negative comments that people make. You know, so frequently we have people coming in here and talking about what could fit in a pot and what could wet dumplings, you know, just walking around right here. But when we release an animal and you know that you made a difference in what could possibly be future generations of that species, there's so much deep personal reward to doing this. You can't find the words to really put to the feeling you get after you've taken in an animal that was injured or orphaned, done your part to get it back and ready for release, and then seeing that dove, that owl, that hawk fly off into the distance, knowing that you have made a valuable contribution back into the ecosystem, and in your hope that they will go on to procreate and continue the genetic diversity, which is very important here in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs>